I am Jan Grykus. Uh, welcome to my kitchen. Who knew that we would need to set up photo studios in our homes, but, uh, <laughs> but here we are. I will consider this a success if nothing falls down, so, uh, so let's hope. Um, so did anybody bring needle and thread? If not, great, you're in the right sewing class then. <laughs> well, we're talking, I know that joke never gets old for me. We're talking about winter sewing. I don't know if you can see this. Can uh, without a glare, what happened to me? Oh, I lost me, there I am. Uh, this is winter sewing in February on my patio. And this is what it looks like in May. The reason we do winter sewing is because it's successful, wildly successful, and it works. So it's a way of gardening with, in a little greenhouse and everything goes outside and mother nature takes over the process of uh, getting the seeds ready to germinate. Some native seeds need stratification, which is a period of cold. And, um, and if you're doing all the seeds outside, uh, nature provides that cold period for you anywhere starting from the solstice in December. So some native plants, as you know, need 60, 90, or 120 days, or even just 30 days of winter stratification. So if you're doing this outside, Mother Nature provides that for you. Some seeds need scarification. So that would be clipping it with the nail clippers or filing the seeds down just to get that seed coat to break apart so that the germination process can start. So that too is covered outside with the freeze-thaw, freeze-thaw cycles. So, um, and you have your native plant exchanges. So um, hopefully, or you will again have more. So that's a great way to get seeds. A good resource for your seeds, for native seeds is the Prairie Moon uh, Nursery. And you want the catalog and cultural guide. Inside the cultural guide is sort of your recipe book for how many days over 400 native plants need as far as uh, germination, cold stratification or whatever else they need and the conditions that uh, are good for them to be planted in. So this is a great resource. Go to prairiemoon.com and ask for the cultural guide. Okay, so um, the downfalls, you could start seeds inside, but the downfalls of inside seed starting is that you need a lot of equipment. You need lights, you need a fan, you need a table. You're probably gonna get gnats while they're flying around doing their thing. You're not happy about that. Uh, the plants that you're gonna get from that are not as hardy, not as strong as the plants that you'll find that you'll get when you do it outside. Um, you won't have to do the hardening off uh, process either, which is in and out, in and out. Uh, that's kind of time consuming. You won't have to do any of that. And I hear from a lot of people about, well, I'll just scatter the seeds where I want them to be. And I encourage you to do that too. It's always nice to have things pop up in your yard, but a couple of downfalls with that is you're in competition with birds and squirrels and chipmunks and mice and whatever critters are a little bit hungry and might want to eat those seeds. Um, also, it could be a rain event with heavy flooding and it's going to relocate your seeds. Um, and uh, will you recognize it when you uh, see it start to grow? I start to do a lot of native plants uh, that I have not done before and I'm not exactly sure that I'm going to recognize them in the yard. So, um, I would encourage you to do them outside and then do them in your own little container so that when they are growing, you will, um, you will recognize, you'll be able to match them up and know what it is that you've got. So as the or said, I started in 2008, there was a University of Illinois Master Gardener class that I took and boy, that really lit a fire under me. I uh, started with about a dozen containers and I had 90 on my patio last uh, last winter. So it's it works. It's miraculous. It's in, in, uh, you really want to get more and more of this uh, in your life. So uh, let's see, where are we? Um, so we're going to start the soonest in uh, December solstice. If you start before that, your seeds might actually germinate and then they will not make it through the winter. So you want the seeds pretty much 
dormant in the soil uh, starting the end of December and then um, and then let it develop as the weather permits. So what you need, you have a list of what you need and plastic containers and milk jugs, whoops, something fell, um, are what you need. So for native seeds, plastic strawberry containers are, are a great thing. There's bigger containers. Costco is really great for any of their fruit are in great clamshell containers. If you don't have the clamshell containers, you can get spinach containers. These work. Or you can get, this was from Costco. It had two uh, sections of ravioli in it. While you empty it out, you prepare the containers, you put one on top of another, voila, you've got a container. If you want to get, I mean, you're going to start shopping a whole new way once you know that you can reuse all of these containers. And I have a message. I thought I told everybody I was doing this now. Okay, this is mushrooms. This was for mushrooms. This was from blueberries, one on top of the other. Voila, you've got yourself a new container. Everything, everything works, really. It's wonderful. For the milk jugs, you can't use the Costco milk jugs because they are too opaque. You want something that's a little bit translucent. So this is perfect. Um, you're going to cut a hole around underneath the handle, all the way around almost to the other handle and uh, put in some drainage holes and we'll go over how to do that. And, um, oh, let's do that now, okay? So here we have, more things falling. So I recommend a drill, it's easy to do that. And then you're gonna want to get yourself a styrofoam pad, something to drill into. You don't wanna drill into your kitchen table or your lap. Uh, and the power drill works really good. If you don't happen to have a power drill, you can use something like a Phillips screwdriver or even a letter opener. And these things might be better uh, heated over a flame on the stove or over a candle just to help you get through that plastic. But that's why I like um, a drill. Here we go. You want four holes on the bottom. And then for the plastic, for the milk jug, you're going to put two uh, punch holes in the top and two on the bottom across from the handle so that you can twist tie them together. Everyone, again, drop something. Everyone is uh, got emails. Um, I'm getting a lot of emails on how to win or sew and a lot of YouTube out there. They all recommend duct tape to use but that's a waste of a one-time use non-compostable item. So you really don't need any kind of duct tape at all in your containers. You might need a little bit of tape on uh, of something like this that you're, that you're putting together, a makeshift container. You might need a little bit of tape, but that's okay. So um, let's see, potting soil. The next thing we're gonna do is put in potting soil and you want good potting soil. You don't want seed starter mix. There aren't enough nutrients in that to make it all the way outside. You don't want heavy garden soil that's gonna have wheat seeds and pathogens possibly in it, as well as home compost. You don't want to use that. So a good potting soil is your best bet. Um, you don't want cactus mix either because that's just not enough nutrients either. So a good, seriously. A good, uh, a good potting mix is available from a lot of places. I know when we did this at Seguin, we used um, Purple Cow, which is great. So you can check out your local uh, garden centers. They might even have their own bagged uh, potting soil. So that's good to use. Um, and let's see, and you could, it's better if it doesn't have soil moist crystals, but Frankly, I have used that as well too, and it works. It's better without because depending on your seeds, they might not like so much moisture, but if you have to use it, use it, and then look at the next time for something that doesn't have that. Um, 
and seeds. My goodness, you've got all the seeds that you want. If you're looking in a store and all the stores have them out now, they're even um, on sale usually. So if you're gonna look for native plants, you wanna look for something that if it doesn't say native, like uh, something about where it's gonna be growing like prairie or mountain or um, seeds that say they self sow readily or start in early spring or needs pre-chilling. Those are clues uh, on the soil, on the seed packet that will tell you that this is perfect for winter sowing. But as the master gardener with my vegetables, frankly, I do a whole lot more vegetables, herbs, and flowers than I do natives because that's where I have a place to plant all of this stuff. So um, definitely, I mean, everyone here eats, yes. So definitely think about uh, doing some food as well. There's spinach, there's kale, there's Swiss chard. There's a lot of all those early uh, cabbage, brassica plants that are perfect for this method, carrots even. So um, don't limit yourself just to natives. Um, get something growing so that you can eat it as well. So, um, okay. Really? <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm only popular when I'm busy. Um, okay, so um, we have prepared the container, well, prepared one of the containers. We are going to plant um, a strawberry container and we're going to plant it with lobelia. Red lobelia requires 60 days of cold stratification. So uh, we hope that there's enough time. Some of these seeds you really do need to get started the end of December or early January. So check out that list and make sure that you, um, you have enough time. Like white turtle head will need 120 days of cold stratification. So when I harvested those seeds, I put them in my refrigerator. You can put them in a plastic bag with a little bit of sand and moisten it a bit so that it's already getting the time that it needs. And then probably tomorrow I will sew it in my containers and put it outside to finish it off. So pay attention to the number of days that are needed for cold stratification. So um, in this strawberry container, I've uh, drilled in like four holes on the bottom. Even though there are holes all around the sides, you still wanna put in some extra drainage. And on the top, I put in six holes. You want all the holes to be drilled from the top down because I don't know if you can see this, uh, the holes here, there's, they're kind of punched up. You don't want that on the top because the water will settle around that hole. So um, again, with your drill and all the styrofoam packing that we have from all of our, uh, our, um, Amazon packages this uh, COVID time. You can kind of jerry rig something to fit into the um, to fit into the area that you need to drill. And okay, so now we have five holes on the top because you want the rain and the snow to get in in the middle as well too, despite the fact that we have all these holes on the sides. Now, while your container is dry, you want to mark it and you want to mark it with a paint pen. Take your 40% off coupon and go to Hobby Lobby or Michaels or Joanne Fabrics and ask them where their paint pen aisle is. I know Sharpies say that they're permanent markers, but they are no match for the sun. And unless you want a lot of surprises come spring, uh, you really wanna get a paint pen. And you want to mark it on the containers when they're dry. So um, fortunately I have common milkweed on here. This will be for common milkweed at another time. So mark it in a couple of places. You can mark it on top, you can mark it on the side, two sides so that Maybe if the sun does get at it, this is a funny kind of a plastic and it uh, goes away, you have it more than one place. You can even do it on the bottom. So uh, that is not gonna have any sunshine on it. And the paint pen should hold the marking so that um, uh, it doesn't wash away. 
you can even put a popsicle stick and put it inside the container before you close it up. But a paint pen is pretty essential. Okay, now I know a lot of these websites and Linda Walker, who does this, insists on getting your soil moist. And that's what we're gonna do for this demonstration. Um, if you're working with kids, they're gonna love to make the mess. And, uh, and if you're doing the local demonstration, it's handier for people to have that soil moist. But after we're done with this, I'll tell you what I do, which isn't quite so messy. I love my hands in the dirt, but not necessarily in all that mud. But here we have the container. If you're worried about all the dirt falling out, you can put one sheet of newspaper at the bottom. Let me clear this off. So for the potting mix, you want to get it warm, you want to get it wet with warm water. So here we have mud. Once you work with dirt and water, you've got yourself a nice pile of mud. As I said, great for the kids. Get them involved, let them slap all of this in there. Um, so I feel like I'm cooking here. Okay, so we're going to fill up the container with this soil that looks a little bit like brownie batter. That's about the consistency that you would like. And you want to fill it up really good. You want to push it down so that it's really solid in there because the uh, outside situation will pack that material down. So you really want to get it really good. All right, so here we have it packed in really nice all the way to the top. All right, there we go. And we're going to take the red lobelia seeds And they just want to be sprinkled down the top. Now, how many seeds do we put in here? Well, that kind of depends on the plant and your willingness to transplant when they're ready to do that. So, and sometimes you just don't have much of a choice. Like if I'm going to get a flower here that's dry that I saved from my yard, I'm going to sprinkle it in here. And I can see that I have a lot of seeds in there. But actually, that's okay. We'll talk about how we're going to plant it out in a little bit. So I have my container filled, packed really tightly. The uh, soil is moist, ready to go. This does not need any dirt on top of it. Uh, if you need to know how much dirt to put on top of your seeds, the rule of thumb is twice the width of the seed. So sometimes that's a quarter of an inch, sometimes that's a half an inch. You can Google all of that stuff too. So I'm just gonna close this up. My container is marked, it's plant. Oh, you wanna press down the seeds into the soil. You want good seed to soil contact. So I'm gonna close up my lid. My container is marked, it's ready. I'm gonna put it outside and do a little happy dance and wait, wait for the magic to happen. So for a milk jug, you're gonna do the same thing. Now the strawberry container does not have a lot of headroom and some of the information you get will say that you need four inches of headroom. That isn't necessarily true for natives because they once they reach the top of that strawberry container or another shallower container, they're pretty much good to go with the lid off. So you're okay with that. For other like vegetables or herbs or other tender flowers, it's good to have four inches for your soil at the bottom and four inches of headroom. That gives them a chance to really grow. And, uh, and you saw my picture here. There is stuff coming out all over. So, um, so it's good to have headroom for some plants. Natives really are okay with it. Um, and for the 
labeling, you really want to make sure that you label. What I do with my milk jugs is I number them and I have a spreadsheet indoors where I have listed what they are and when I planted them. And um, if you don't label them, you wind up with a surprise. One year I planted a whole turkey roasting pan with a, it had a plastic lid on it. I lost the markings. I didn't remember what I planted. I must have lost the list as well. I didn't recognize the leaf. I planted them in the yard. I watched them be green all summer. But the following year, foxgloves, because that's a biennial and it needs, uh, it, it blooms in its second year anyway. So that was a nice surprise, but you don't want 90 containers of surprises. And in fact, I still have some descendants of that plant. So, um, so it's, some surprises are good, but you don't want them all to be surprises. So label, 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 label on the top, label on the sides, label on the bottom, label on the inside and use that paint pen. All right, then you're going to put the milk jugs outside. Um, and you're gonna be looking at them all the time and you're gonna wonder what is she talking about? I don't see anything here, but one by one slowly, I promise you they will turn, they will, you'll start to see green, you'll be very excited. You wanna put them outside where they can drain. You want to put them in a half sun day position, which is the best. If it's from sun up to sundown, full sun, that might be a little bit too much for them. Um, the seedlings, well, the container will heat up, so you don't want to make it really that hot uh, or that much sun. So a half a day sun is the best possible place for them. If um, the, uh, the ch uh, chipmunks and the squirrels, they will peek in, they will look at it, they will smell it, but they won't do anything about it. I've never had any critter damage. If you're using something like a milk jug, uh, not a milk jug, I'm sorry, um, a water bottle, you might want to create some area where they will not be blown over in the wind. I know one of our garden club members, so uh, that's all they have are all those kinds of water bottles. So they make sure that they put them someplace where the wind's not gonna blow them all over. Um, okay, so the only time that you're really going to have to worry about them is when we get warmer weather. Do you remember in 2012 when we had that whole week of 80 degree hot, sunny weather, windy? Well, those containers are gonna dry up in those conditions. So if it's over 32 degrees and you see condensation on the top of the container, you're good. If you pick it up and it feels heavy, then you're good. But if it doesn't feel heavy and you don't see the condensation, you will want to rehydrate those containers because in this process, at this point in time, in the process, a dry seed is a dead seed. So you can water with a watering can and a rose, water all over them. What I like to do as well is put a, a tray like this. This happens to be a kitty litter tray, but whatever you happen to have, a kid's pool or whatever, fill it with water, set the container inside, wait about 20, 30 minutes, and then when it feels heavy enough, then you take it out and you put in your other containers. That's kind of the easiest way to do it. Okay, now I think I promised you a different way of planting. If you don't want to work with that mud, I can turn the camera around, but visualize a kitchen counter with a bag of dirt and the sink. I have a double sink, so my containers are in the sink. My hose is getting everything all nice and wet, uh, and it's draining out in the sink. So uh, then I uh, plant the seeds, I top it with whatever soil, amount of soil, if it needs it. And then it goes in this container, I cover it up, I slide it down the rest of the counter, out to the patio door and onto the patio. So, um, so that's how I do it because I don't really like that big mess, but you can do it either way. If you're working with kids, as I said, they're gonna love that nice wet mess, but, um, but I prefer a different way. 
there's always more than one way to skin a cat, isn't there? Sorry, cat lovers. Um, okay, so now, now it's May and you have all of this stuff that's growing magically, wonderfully well. What are you gonna do with it? So it depends on what it is and how thickly you've planted it, uh, how you're gonna plant it. You can tease them all out and plant them individually when the weather is right. Um, or you can take out a chunk and plant the chunk. That's called hunk of seedlings. You can plant that out in the yard. Um, if it's something like parsley, or alyssum or a grass that you've planted, that's fine to be planted in a little chunk. Even if it's a different, uh, bigger kind of a plant, a small chunk is fine to plant if you've overseeded. And the strongest in all of those plants, it will be the one to survive. Or you can dig them out individually and you can plant them up in tall plug pots. I'm sure you have all those tall plug pots from um, from uh, past native plant sales and plant it in there. You'll have to take care of it for the summer, of course, watering it to make sure it's all watered, but, but then you can plant it in the fall. And here, I don't know if this is possible to see, but I this was last year's white turtle head that I planted winter sowing and I took them apart one by one, put them in these tall plug pots and in September, this is the kind of root mass that you're gonna have. And most of my plants were actually in flowers. So I love white turtle head. So, um, so the choice is yours. If you're gonna put something out in the garden, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to watering it. I know you're having Denise Sandoval. She's a friend of mine. She's been over to my yard. She uses those uh, flags when you call Julie and you get your house marked uh, for lines and stuff. She uses those flags to put them in spots where she's planted something. I know I have a third of an acre and I, you know, sometimes I plant something by the time I've come inside, I've forgotten what and where. So if you put in those uh, flags, you'll know exactly where you need to pay attention to watering. Okay. Um, there are some resources online. There's wintersowing.org. Uh, there's a garden for the house. Uh, if you will sign on for his emails, he sent you a fabulous recipe on Sunday mornings. But he has a winter sewing 101 tutorial. Almost all of them have, uh, are using duct tape, which really isn't necessary at all. Oh, I think I forgot to go through this part. So for a milk jug, we did in the, the two hole punches in the top and at the bottom, and we're just gonna tie it together and close it. There's no need, I know it's not going to close perfectly, it's not going to be hermetically sealed, but it doesn't need to be. Uh, I haven't used any tape on these kinds of jugs for the last three years. There's actually no difference in the germination rate. So really it's better not to use anything like that tape only sparingly if you need it for certain containers. So, are there any questions? I don't know if I can see the chat. Are there okay. any? A question, Bill Neal asks, uh, and maybe you could look at it too, a question on sowing seeds of annuals and some veggies, not native plants. At another Zoom presentation, the speaker said germination times for winter sowing may be different than germinating seeds under grow lights in the basement. Our local garden club usually has a plant sale of seeds we have sown. It would be important to have the plants ready by a specific date. Due to COVID, I was thinking we might use winter sowing to take the place of group planning and tending. I wonder about the reliability of having transplants ready by a specific date. Your thoughts? Uh, yeah, that's an issue because my garden club too, our, our plant sale is always the day before Mother's Day. That could be as early as May 8th. To be honest, a winter sowing 
containers, the plant is not going to be large enough to sell as a large plant if people, if that's what people are looking for. I have sown a lot of uh, natives for the plant sale uh, with the understanding and telling the people that are getting them that these plants are small and you'll have to plant them uh, a little bit later in the month uh, when they are better ready to be planted outdoors. But I've sold the whole container for that purpose because you can't transplant something that's only this little um, into a pot and sell it. So if you give them the whole container, which has, I don't know, six, eight, 12 seeds, depending on what the plant is, uh, I think that went over better in the last two years than trying to get um, a plant. You can even do winter sowing with tomatoes, but to be honest, it's not going to be a big tomato and the end of May even. People are looking for big honking tomato plants with flowers and tomatoes on them already. You're not going to get that with winter sowing. You're going to have a hardier plant, but it's going to be smaller for a longer time. It will eventually catch up and be a terrific plant, but not for an early plant sale. Okay, um, how <coughs> necessary is cleaning the seeds? Sorry, cleaning the seeds, you mean scarification? Um, or just, I think getting the husks off and you know, just how, how clean do you recommend the seeds to be? Oh, um, well, yeah, that too is going to depend on the seeds. Some of them are totally covered with, um, with, um, um, oh, what's the word? Not fluff. Um, yeah, oh, the, the more clean you can get it, the better. But as far as cleaning the containers, uh, if it's a milk container and it's got some sour milk in it, you want to clean that out. But otherwise, the water jugs don't need any cleaning. I reuse my milk jugs uh, for about three years before the sun makes them too brittle to be used. Um, but you don't have to clean them out when you're using them the second or third year. You just fill it up with dirt. And in order to store them, because I have kind of a lot of containers, I got several seven foot bamboo poles and I put them in a, a wrought iron umbrella stand and I thread them through those poles so that they're stored upright vertically rather than um, kicking and tripping all over them in the garage. Oh, great. That's a great which, tip. Which um, got off the topic of cleaning the seeds, but get them as clean as, as you can. Yeah. A little bit of organic material is okay, but- A little bit's fine, yeah. All right, uh, next question. Do you put the lid on the milk jug or do you drill extra holes in those containers too? Thanks, this was a great presentation. No containers. You're gonna take that top from that container and throw it in the recycling bin. You do not use that top. And I know some, um, some demonstrations will say to draw uh, drill holes in the top. That's because they're using this big honk and mess of uh, duct tape around the, the side. I don't do that. I only put them together as best it can be and I tie it up. And because of, there's air holes, it's not perfectly sealed. There are air holes on either side, so it does not need drilling a hole on top. You might want to do that is if you're doing a water container, you can cut the entire water top part off, put in your dirt on the bottom, and then you can refit the bottom part securely under the top part. In that situation, you might wanna drill a couple holes across the top, but otherwise in a milk jug, you do not need to do that. Great, um, thank you. Uh, Bill Neal says, thank you. Um, any more questions? Any other questions? Going once. Uh, Mary says, such a detailed and wonderful presentation. Thanks. And I agree. I, I learned a lot today. Thank you. I, I am looking through my list to see if I forgot anything. I mean, really, it's, it's just so exciting when you put this outside and, and by the end of March, actually, usually it's my kale that is the first thing to come up. But once that starts, then, then the cabbage will start and then some of the natives will start. It's really very exciting to see all of that. So, great. 
you must try, especially with kids. Kids will love this. Um, thank you, Jan, that was awesome. And actually, if I might ask a question, I hope sure. that's all right. Um, so I started some seeds in the middle of the summer and I have them in the tall plug containers and then I just overwintered them. They're sitting uh -huh. right at, will that work? Yes, will they, that will work too. They'll be okay there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they will be fine. Uh, in fact, some of those uh, turtle heads that I planted up there, I had no place to put them uh, one year when I did that. So I buried them in my vegetable garden. I covered them with leaves and just left them there and planted them even the second year. So uh, yes, if you want to just, that's another way to do it. Actually, the master naturalists have done that in the native demo garden over in Naperville, close to our vegetable plots. Um, they planted probably 20 plug pots with seeds. They just left them on the ground. They were planning on covering them up with leaves once the temperatures uh, froze and snow was expected. And I'm really interested to see how that works. I'm sure that will be fine. Let us know what happens to yours. Thank you. <laughs> In fact, I just did that with Queen of the Prairie. I saw that Queen of the Prairie needs 90 days of cold stratification, and I, we don't know what the weather is going to be. I'm not sure if this was early enough to plant that, and I didn't put them in the refrigerator first, but I just planted the seeds in a 12-pack container, and I'm going to just leave it outside. So, Let's yeah, see. the more experimentation you can do, the better. That's how you learn how things work. So I'm Yeah, also and it's... It's fun, that's too, it's fun. Um, someone else just asked, can you um, repeat the name of the soil oh, at that you Sedwin, recommend? At said when they used uh, purple cow, I recommend them. That's a highly uh, high quality potting soil, but there are others. And like I said, even your garden centers might have their own bags of uh, proprietary soil, that's uh, a good one to use as well too. Just don't get the cheapest thing you can because it all starts with the soil, doesn't it? So we really would like would like to start with good soil. It does all start with good soil, you're right. Um, thanks a lot, Jan, that was wonderful. And I know you have several more of these coming up, so good luck with these. Um, I I don't think I was trying to see if there were any. Oh, Stephanie says she uses Fox Farm, which you also Fox, can get it. That's, yeah, that's, that's a good one. That's a good one as well. Okay, so um, we are going to go on and do some breakout room fun, which you're welcome okay. to join us for. And if not, we could just say adieu. But either way, um, thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm going to stop the recording. Okay.